Apple has finally announced their headset, the Vision Pro, and I've got so much to tell you about it today. Plus, I wanna give you all of my thoughts because I'm someone who's used a ton of different headsets, the Magic Leap, the Quest, the Quest Pro, the HoloLens. I understand this space and I have a lot to say about this headset. There's so much to cover. There's so much innovation. This is the first time that Apple has brought out a brand new line of type of technology with their brand in a very long time. And they came out with a bang. I am very impressed with a lot of these features, how clear it is, the look and style of it, and a lot of the applications. I'm gonna get into all of that today. It's $3,500. That is so expensive. Not gonna be for everyone. This is of course, the first version of many and not everyone's always gonna want that first one and it's not coming until early next year. And you can bet I'm going to get one and I'm gonna be putting out more content. Anyway, let's get into it. Apple kept saying spatial computing. This is spatial computing. Spatial computing. Spatial computing. Spatial computing. And you know what? This isn't the first time we've heard that. Magic Leap first coined that and used it widely with their product. I did a whole series of videos on the Magic Leap headset, and to me, that was one of the most innovative mixed reality headsets where the things you were seeing through the glasses literally interacted with your surroundings, whether that was flying a rocket ship and it hitting the ceiling and the wall and exploding, or putting little creatures on your bed, and that stuff you should check out on this channel to understand what this technology can do and already exists. Then there's the Quest Pro, which I used a lot while I was at CNET. I created a whole video on working within it and having multiple screens up, and while it was a peek at what the future could look like in this realm, it wasn't where I wanted it to be. It kind of felt like, why am I looking at a screen that is way less pixels when I could look at my 4K monitor and, and work through that? So Apple has made some huge innovation here and let's get into that. What impressed me most about Apple's vision was they were just showing people walking around spaces, using this device wherever they wanted. And that's what I wanted with the Quest Pro and didn't really get. It could do a lot of the things that the Apple headset could, could do when it comes to using applications. And it looks similar, but nowhere near this freedom of moving around. Now let's talk about what this headset looks like. It has no controllers. It uses hands and voice with Siri. It looks just as bulky as the Quest Pro. It's not huge, but it is definitely a statement and it may not be comfortable over a long period of time. There's a strap that goes around the sides of your head. That's what they showed at the presentation, but apparently everyone who used this headset at the demo on site, they also had a strap around the top of their head. Very interesting that Apple didn't show that in any of the marketing. Maybe they're working to make it more comfortable without that, who knows? Also, a lot of people have said like, why didn't we see anyone who works at Apple wearing the headset? That will always be a mystery. This headset has beautiful design and who's surprised with Apple? There's this orange stitching that really reminds me of the Apple Watch Ultra and is just like so freaking pretty. This is a very nice design. It's nicer than any headset that I've used before. It's got a button on it that will record spatial photos and video and a digital crown that summons your home view and it also controls immersion levels. So if you're watching a movie or you're in an application and you twist it more, it will bring you more into an environment of your choosing or less if you wanna be in your physical space. The device itself has a glass lens cover front and aluminum ally casing. This thing is beautiful. And I think a big step here is that it's modular to fit you perfectly. So one day you'll go to the Apple store, you'll do a fitting and you'll find the best fit for you. This is great because you'll get a headset that is catered to your face and your eyes and your IPD, the interpupillary distance will be perfect with these lens. So that's great. They also have lens inserts. The downside is, if you make one that's perfect for your face, it's not gonna be as adaptable as say the Quest Pro is for other users who wanna try it on. With the Quest Pro, you can move the lens sideways and then uh, forward and backward. So, you know, I guess you'll just have to get another $3,500 headset for them to use. 
Apple says you're gonna get all day usage with it plugged in, which makes sense. Uh, but also there is a battery pack you could plug it into that will give you two hours with every charge. Not that long, but are we gonna be wanting to wear this headset for more than two hours? Probably not, based off of my experience with the Quest Pro, unless they made it so like it's not even on your head, uh, we're not gonna be wanting to wear it for more than two hours at a time. And odds are, they said this device starts at $3,500. That battery pack's definitely gonna be an extra, what, 500 bucks? All right, let's get into the technology within the device. So there's this thing called EyeSight. EyeSight allows people to see your eyes via a screen in front of the headset. So it seems like you're looking directly at someone if you wanna to speak to someone in the outside world. These eyes will also be visible if you don't currently have applications in front of you. Now, when you're using apps, you will still see the eyes, but there will be some uh, like a cool flow in front of them. And then when you're in full immersion, your eyes will go away and there will be just a complete video on there that shows people on the outside that you're fully immersed. There's also an ability where when someone comes near you, they will actually kind of impose on your immersion and be able to interact with you. That's unlike any other headset that I've used before. The fact that people can come in while you're fully immersed and kind of interject with that experience is really good, especially if there's a fire or something or some sort of issue um, or just, it's just cool in general. All right, how do you control this thing? Eye tracking and hands, uh, hand movements like pinching and flicking and um, looking where you want and selecting with a pinch. This is truly miraculous. Like, so there is eye tracking to some, in some sorts on the Quest Pro and on the PlayStation VR 2, but none of them go this far. This is exactly where we want this technology to be. In fact, it could be interesting if computers could track your eyes as you're looking at the screen too, but for now we're gonna have it in this headset. So you're gonna be able to control with your eyes, your hands, and even your voice with Siri. Now the problem is Siri's just not that great. And I, um, I hope that they make very big improvements to that uh, because this headset seems to rely heavily on that since there are no controllers. Maybe AI will finally be introduced into Siri at some point. The headset will unlock by looking at your eyes and it will know that it is you. And also Apple is keeping all of your eye movements completely private. Can't say the same for Facebook. Facebook is all about advertising and I bet they are already tracking what we're looking at, where we're looking, and that is gonna be a big step above Facebook and maybe even pressure Facebook to not do that. Although Facebook has their cheaper headsets, their Quest 3 coming in the fall, maybe that's just kind of the give and take of that headset. Within the Vision Pro, there is the M2 chip, which is making all of this possible, plus a brand new R1 chip. It processes input from 12 cameras, five sensors, and six mics. With these two chips, this headset is able to accomplish ridiculous amounts. Let's start with Vision OS, um, the operating system. So there is going to be the ability for it to create a digital persona when you are conversing with other people over FaceTime. So when you're wearing the headset, it will track your eye movement, what you're saying, and create an avatar for you that has depth and volume, kind of like Uncanny Valley. Um, we'll see how people feel about this. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna be very weird. I'm very excited to try it out, but um, I'm sure it will get better over time. And now let's get into the quality of video you're seeing because this is just a huge upgrade ab above any headset that I've used. So there is a 4K resolution per eye using a micro OLED Apple Silicon backplane. Basically the amount of pixels amounts to for every one pixel on an iPhone, there's 64 pixels on this headset. That is nuts and the video you're playing will be at a true 4K resolution. So that means when you're watching video in this headset, it will be the same as you're watching video on your TV at home or a 4K screen that you're using for work, which I think is like the necessary thing for me to want to actually use this device. When it comes to audio, there's spatial audio, which will come in handy when you're watching television or different shows or movies, but also when you're talking to other people. So if you have people lined up around you, you'll be able to hear them from different areas, which is something that I found was missing from 
other headsets I've used like the Quest Pro because I was around all these avatars, but I would kind of hear them in stereo. I wouldn't hear them from the direction. I mean, I guess I'd hear from behind or in front. Um, so I guess there was some sp spatial audio, but this is probably gonna be much bigger of an upgrade. I think the biggest upgrade for using a headset like this is the fact that it's interconnected in iCloud. So your iPhone, your Apple Watch, your computer, they'll all be kind of working together. The fact that you can put your laptop out and the headset, when you look at it, will just lift the screen out and you could start using those applications within the headset, hopefully gonna be so seamless, as seamless as copying something on your iPhone and then pasting it on your Mac, which is one of my favorite things to do. I want to try Final Cut 10 on this. I want to see what editing a mo of editing my videos would look like on a plane using my keyboard and trackpad on my laptop, which I believe is also um, a thing you can do based off of what they're showing. Aside from that keyboard, you can also use their Magic Keyboard and mouse alongside with the headset. I hope that you'll also be able to use Logitech devices. I have a Logitech MX keys and mouse, and that's what I prefer to use, especially over a Magic Mouse, which still has the charging port on the bottom. Now, before I get into movies, I think it's interesting that there weren't all of this, there wasn't all of this talk of all of these streaming platforms that are gonna be available within the headset to watch, like Netflix, HBO, all of these apps. Yes, Disney Plus is gonna be there, I'll get into that in a second, but I think in many ways, this headset is gonna be very basic at launch when it comes to software. It's gonna have to grow over time. The same thing happened with the iPhone and the Apple Watch, is that it came out, it was revolutionary, but you couldn't do as much as you can today. Like it's the amount of applications and what you can do today on iPhone, iPad, Apple watch is incredible, but it wasn't there on day one. It took some time for developers to catch up. The headset also acts as a 3d camera. So if you're watching video or pictures on here, that content can also be three dimensional, have some depth. So Apple showed off this home video of children playing and the, the father, I believe was wearing the headset and I mean, it's a little kooky that, you know, are you gonna put this headset on to record big family moments or will they come out with a stand for the headset that can kind of record the whole room? I think that is a bigger opportunity with this headset rather than like, I don't wanna be wearing this headset on my like five-year-old's birthday and being like, oh my God, smile, blow out the candles. Like I wanna actually be there and have them see my face, <laughs> like not wear a headset. So that's kind of interesting. I. Be curious to hear what your thoughts on that are. So now let's get into movies. Watching movies on this seems to be incredible. Like the fact that you can be completely immersed somewhere, look at the corner and pinch and create a bigger screen feels like it could be so seamless and I hope it is. These open environments also look amazing. You can have, you can be in like a whole lake area. I mean, there's just so many different environments and the screen also kind of reflects off of that environment. It kind of reacts to it. Also, windows in general throughout this um, headset as you're using them kind of have like depth and shadow to them. With movies, there's also the ability to kind of put yourself in a cinema room, this just dark room. And I could see myself being on a plane, putting this on and using it. But are we gonna be in a future where just everyone on the plane is wearing these headsets? Everyone in first class is gonna get one. Before I end this, we gotta talk about this Disney partnership. Apple brought Disney in early to take a stab at creating software and experiences for this, and it looks like there's so much in store. It's ridiculous. So the Disney Plus app is gonna be there on day one. Fantastic, but not all I watch. I'm sure you'll be able to buy things on iTunes, but no, I need my streaming platforms. Can you use them on a web browser? Who knows? Odds are no. But it was more than just a Disney Plus player. There were widgets and screens all around the video you were watching. You were in an environment. When you're watching The Mandalorian, you'll actually be in a setting of that show, which is so crazy. Or if you're watching ESPN, there will be multiple screens up. And something I've always expected to happen is there being like an actual physical basketball game, a real one on your coffee table and you're watching it because there's 3D cameras in that stadium and you're like seeing this three dimensional game. Like this is gonna revolutionize sports and the way we see them. And maybe you won't even wanna go to the field, you'll wanna stay home, which is also kinda sad. 
And with that said, gaming is also gonna be something big here. They put an emphasis on that. One thing I was hoping for, and I don't know if it's even gonna be possible, but I hope it is, is the ability to hook up your PlayStation 5 or your Nintendo Switch to the headset so you can play these systems in the headset in these environments. That I think that would be a big game changer for me. It would bring in even more abilities to this headset. As of now, it doesn't seem like that's the plan, but over time, they could introduce that feature. What features are you most excited for? I need to hear what you think is going to be awesome on this, what you think is going to come. It, like, I feel like this conversation is going to go on and on until it actually comes out, and then it's going to go on and on. Stay tuned. I'm going to have this headset as soon as it does come out. I'm sad I didn't get to demo it, but I hope that you learned a lot in this video. I'm very excited for all the videos I have coming in store, so make sure you like this video so people find it. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.